לעונג הוא לי ולכבוד, it's a pleasure and, uh, and an honor to do it again at the first time this year, not to this audience of course. So, um, agricultural applications of biosolids treated with uh, fly ash and lime and biosoil and I'm happy to be here again as I said. Well, do we... Okay. So, <clears throat> what am I going to, to talk about? So that would be an overview of, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> possible benefits and risk from using and biosol. So, um, direct, direct benefits, <clears throat> fertilizer substitute, source for microelements and uh, Viable organic matter additive. Viable in the sense that it's not yet degraded as some other products are. Soil disinfection, <clears throat> especially in light textured soils. <coughs> Improvement of sodic soils and so on, where people have talked about that a lot. Potentially improve quality of agricultural product, also deteriorate. That is uh, one of the risks. <clears throat> so there is the risks are high pH and whatever that might cause uh, to elemental uh, availability, in element availability in the soil. <coughs> Phytoavailability of, uh, of uh, oxy anions and heavy metals, and diminished availability, phytoavailability of phosphorus and uh, iron. For example, these are possible risks. We'll, we'll see if it's uh, actual. There are benefits to the environment, which I'm not going to talk about, but just mention it now here. <clears throat> it circumvents composting, reducing emissions of uh, greenhouse gases, which are associated with composting, and emissions of ammonia, approximately 40 kilograms per dry ton. <clears throat> and uh, odors and uh, dust, and eliminates, and this is something new that people here are working on, Elia Kaplan and Eddie Citrin, it completely eliminates antibiotic-resistant microorganisms within the sludge itself. There are benefits to the sector urban, but I'm not going to talk about that. <clears throat> so, I'll wet my throat. Be beware of flying objects. Use, uh, I prefer my stick <coughs> to that. <laughs> I'm more frightening this way. Besides, I must give some performance. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> composition of uh, our sludges <clears throat> in general. So, if we <clears throat> go to the macro things, organic carbon, total nitrogen, C2N ratio, total P, and uh, these uh, uh, monitored elements, or um, how they call it, I forgot it, pH and uh, electrical conductivity. So we have this Shafdan uh, sludge with uh, close to 6.5% nitrogen. Upon enviro treatment, it reduces to between 0.8 to 1.8, what we had in the field this year, actually, sludge compost, about 2 to 3%, depends on how they prepare it, how, uh, how mature it is. C2N ratio is ap appropriately. And uh, total P, again, reduces tremendously upon uh, uh, mixing with other material which do not contain phosphorus. High pH in the enviro. <laughs> Doesn't look nice. EC is not very different from other material. <clears throat> And trace elements, or uh, uh, we call them priority trace elements, are uh, not uh, really a problem, as people said. <clears throat> so we want to start examining the, the evidence. <clears throat> Nitrogen mineralization, some people have seen it already. This is the original Shafdan sludge. Oh, what, what do we see here? We incubated. Soil sludge mixtures, different sludges <clears throat> in the lab, 
at 500 kilograms per nitrogen, uh, nitrogen per hectare equivalent. So all of them are at the same <coughs> nitrogen content total. And over time, under <coughs> uh, optimal conditions, we measured accumulation of mineral nitrogen. And what we see here that is that the Shafdan sludge itself, the original sludge, and the enviro produced from it have the same, exactly the same uh, rates of nitrogen mineralization. While compost, this is the net accumulation of nitrogen. <coughs> While compost might have some uh, nice accumulation, or in, or in some other cases, they actually eliminate nitrogen from the soil, which is biological immobilization. Giving numbers to that according to known equations, <coughs> then we see approximately 45% mineralization of nitrogen in the untreated sludge or non-stabilized sludge, either treated or non, either treated or not treated. <coughs> With the compost, we had between nitrogen, sorry, between 19% mineralization of total nitrogen to zero, or even negative mineralization. This doesn't say nothing about what will happen in the field. About that we'll talk tomorrow when we meet in the field and near the field. Phosphorus. I mentioned before <coughs> phosphorus <coughs> was uh, thought or actually from all our models, we know that there will be no phosphorus availability in uh, enviro amended soils. Why? Because of the high pH, because of the precipitation with uh, soluble calcium, eventually will hit, <coughs> end up uh, with hydroxyapatite, no phosphorus availability. What we see if we look again on the same incubation system that we had over time, solubility this time or extractability of phosphorus, of phosphate, autophosphate in uh, Olsen reagent, <coughs> which is the measure, we need approximately 20 milligrams per kilogram. Above that we uh, fertilize below that, uh, sorry, above that we do not fertilize, below that we do fertilize. <coughs> and with all, all of the treatments with manure addition, like uh, kettle manure compost, or that was uh, sewage sludge compost, or some type of uh, lime stabilized compost, we had always above 40, 400 years. And it goes on, actually. Looking <coughs> at percent Solubility. What we did is we took different manures, I only, I'm only showing several, and we extracted them repeatedly. Each week we replaced the solution in uh, <coughs> deionized water. Altogether we had a ratio of 400 milliliters per gram, cumulative, removed the material, measured, <coughs> measured phosphorus. And this is the percent solubilization at approximately soil pH. You see 0 .8, 8 .2, 7 .6, 8 .4 of different manures. What manures do we have here? <coughs> this is compost, so it's large compost, I think. Yeah. No, this is the compost. This is the enviro soil. Exactly the same solubilization in water. Of, uh, of phosphorus, and this is once a week removal, which is uh, in at equilibrium. This is the line stabilized sludge from the Bay Chemesh, which is much lower solubility. This is sludge from uh, Haifa, anaerobically digested sludge, and kettle manure uh, compost. Won't go into that, just to show you that actually compost and enviro behave exactly the same. And if we are going to <coughs> phase diagrams, we show the <coughs> actually the actual or assumed uh, solid component that controls phosphorus solubility. 
dicalcium phosphate would its solubility will will the points if we put dicalcium phosphate dihydrate in solution and mix it well at equilibrium all points with all solubility of uh, the relevant species which are phosphorus and calcium will fall on this line octa calcium phosphate and beta 3 calcium phosphate which is less soluble we can see here <coughs> that enviro soil from the shafdan and compost both fall on octa calcium phosphate and these are <coughs> points each week we removed this is after one month and for cumulative uh, dissolutions the same as we saw before but uh, this time in uh, phase diagrams so again <coughs> if we compare it to an experiment we done the same from <coughs> organic agriculture some, somewhere in the Negev a huge number of samples soil samples all of them fall on octacalcium phosphate exactly as we saw for uh, enviro and uh, and uh, the sludge compost so from both evidence we can see that phosphorus solubility supposed to be high and similar between compost and enviro soil despite of the high concentration of soluble calcium <coughs> I won't go into uh, mechanisms, but uh, just to show the facts. This is a performance you didn't think of. <laughs> you are healthier than I am. Trace elements. We have a huge field experiment which goes now for the fourth year but what I want and we'll see tomorrow what I want to show is from this um, lysimeter experiment that the Roy, Roy is here Roy conducted and <coughs> this is it 200 liter 200 liter 220 liter lysimeters and we planted we mixed it well we mixed the upper layer of the soil with three soils upper layer of the soil was mixed with uh, three sludges right three sludges compost raw sludge and uh, and bio soil and we had four seasons of lettuce two summers two winters with three application repeated application between them at spring <coughs> Priority <coughs> arsenic cadmium and lead and other elements in this is in sand dune this is in a uh, loisel uh, light brown loam and in a vertisol these are the three soils <coughs> this is after the second year but it was the same after the third year and you can see here that uh, actually the if we are taking enviro and compost in sand arsenic is below detection actually is below quantification quantification limits for cadmium was uh, 0 0.35, 0 0.0 or 35 micrograms per kilogram and so on you can see it here so <coughs> there is no difference only in this year but not between this is the control sand and this is the enviro soil after two applications and compost after two applications all at 50, 50 kilograms per hectare equivalent nitrogen sorry 500 500 kilograms per hectare repeated twice this is in the Loessel soil again we have higher content of cadmium but uh, it's very low compared with the value which is allowed which is one this is 0.1 and <coughs> we can see the same for bone we have higher value here but it is still uh, within the uh, acceptable limits uh, molybdenum is higher bone molybdenum is higher zinc here for the sludge itself and so on and so forth uh, increased values for phosphorus in in the sand no difference in the other soils so generally speaking no problem we also measured uh, hormones in the lettuce and again these these are the four seasons no difference between 
the, the, this is in the three soils pulled together, no difference between the various materials. This is 150 kilograms nitrogen. This is 60 tons cumulative per 600 tons per hectare cumulative. 600 tons per hectare. Three times, cumulative 600 tons. So again, no effect on estrone and testosterone content in the plant. Another crop what, that we tested, <coughs> potatoes. Increasing calcium content in the, in the tubers, which is, this is what, why I was saying that there might be a, a benefit to, uh, to the crop, because this is a, upon storage, this is very important parameter because it keeps the tissue firm over a long um, storage, calcium content in the tubers. No difference in other microelements, in the microelements. <coughs> Cadmium the same in control and, sorry, I didn't say what, didn't, uh, this is the control, not amend, amended, 18 plots, I pulled them together, the different treatments, and 18 plots of uh, enviro soil at uh, four tons per hectare. Sorry, 40 tons per hectare. I think dunam and I, I say dunam is 0.1 hectare. Israel is small, so we measure everything in small measures. We did have increase in molybdenum in the tubers and in selenium. Good. Very uh, significant increase. However, when I visited Italy, which I do often, they have a special product which is called selenella, which is the <coughs> promise higher content of selenium and it costs three times as much, these potatoes, than the regular. We studied the same with carrots, this time at 120 tons per hectare. No difference in the content of the various trace elements. Arsenic was still below uh, quantification and lead was below detection. <coughs> this is a field, you know, with a yellow spot, if you can see it. Some people say, show me a field where you put Enviro, I'll tell you where's the Enviro, when, where is, there is no Enviro. Yellow, Enviro, why? No phosphorus, no whatever, no iron. However, this has no Enviro and this does. So it's the opposite. And if we look at why, first we look at, barium, calcium, cobalt, manganese, men, um, men, manganese, manganese, magnesium, sodium, lead, strontium, lower in the amend amended than in the not amended. However, <coughs> potassium, molybdenum, which is very important, that field was, of, uh, was uh, clover and uh, vitia, vitia, uh, which thrive on molybdenum. They need it for the fixation of uh, nitrogen. And phosphorus was higher in the, um, in the amended compared with the not amendment. Probably this was the reason, the two. So show me yellow and I'll show you what uh, Enviro wasn't given to. Okay. This is a very important issue that Bob, <coughs> Professor Reiner, has <coughs> indicated on <clears throat> showed reduction of uh, actually ammonia reduces uh, pathogens in the sludge itself, but it can also reduce pathogens in the soil. But we have to activate it because soil usually, when we put ammonia in soil, it will become ammonium. So <clears throat> NBio is uh, used for activation of ammonia toxicity uh, by elevating soil pH. And we also elevate soil temperature, and I'll show you why. And it's efficient in light texture soils where there is not much fixation of a gaseous ammonia. <clears throat> now, just to show uh, ammonia toxicity to micro, soil, micro, uh, soil uh, pathogens, soil-borne pathogens like Fusarium, Verticillium, and Sclerotium, and these were the, the Sclerotia or uh, uh, clam, clam, clamidospores and so on. <clears throat> 
So this is the time of exposure. This is the PhD that was done under my supervision, <coughs> among other. <coughs> so this is time of exposure of these uh, <coughs> uh, standing uh, forms or whatever, the sclerotia, let's say. And <coughs> that's the time, that's the concentration of ammonia that was, con con that was needed to heal these uh, standing forms. In 10 minutes, we needed 15 milligrams, micrograms per liter, and in 30 minutes, only seven for fusarium and, and so on and so forth. So it's instantaneous. Now, <coughs> it, when we put ammonium in a soil, it won't uh, transform to ammonia unless we have high pH. And the pH has to be higher than the pKa, and the pKa at 25 degrees is 9.5. And we need, in order for 99% to be close to 10, or over 10, close to 11 in the soil. It's very difficult to achieve in a soil such a high pH, and we don't really know what it will cause the soil to go into. However, <coughs> we can try to reduce this pKa. How do we do that? By <coughs> elevating the soil temperature. Once we elevate soil temperature, the pKa will drop. Instead of being 9.3, it will be 8.7 at 50 degrees centigrade. <clears throat> so we can control the pH. We can control ammonium concentration and, and ammonia as a result. And we can control temperature. These are the three agents that we can operate in the system. All we lead by manipulating them, we can lead, uh, lead to high percentage of uh, ammonia and high concentrations. Now, how do we? The problem with pH is that it immediately drops. We added, uh, let's say, here it was up to 50 tons per hectare of uh, enviro soil to the to the upper soil layer, and after a few days, maybe three or four days it dropped back to the soil pH. So this is the time window that we have, actually here somewhere, where the pH is higher than the target pH, which is pKa plus one. And as I said, in order to reduce the pKa, we can heat the soil and we do it by solarization, by covering with a nylon sheet for a few days. Two, three days is enough. And we have high temperatures underneath, five minutes. That's enough. Two minutes, it's better. Now, what did we achieve in this way? Carnations, for example, which suffer from Fusarium oxyspirum dianti. Untreated, treated. CFU per gram, coliniform units per gram over time. This is with the high treatment. This is what the first experiment that we did more than 10 years ago. After 106, this is initial CFU, immediately after treatment, and this is after 165 days, almost half a year of treatment. It's still very low. We had a huge experiment somewhere in the Negev, 12 treatments, nine, seven is compost, sewage sludge compost, eight is sewage sludge compost plus plastic cover, cover uh, enviro, another enviro, without plastic, with plastic. So let's see just these four. This is before treatment. This is the CFU of uh, pitium, compost, without plastic, with plastic, enviro, without, with. Verticillium, compost, with enviro. Uh, Rhizoctonia, compost, and viral. Same for other streptomyces and so on. Weed, suppression of weed. In, this is in a lettuce field, an experiment that we done last year. Okay, so that was I'll, I'll go to back to the conclusion, but I think that uh, you understand now that nitrogen, phosphorus, microelements, 
potassium, uh, calcium <coughs> solubility, everything is in favor, or at least the same. We have this uh, soil pathogen re uh, reduction and weed reduction, which is um, a benefit which is not uh, uh, company or does, is not accomplished with other man type of, types of manure. Perhaps suppression for extend after extended periods of time, but this is direct uh, reduction, direct disinfection of soil. This is something that we did, you know, uh, Rami, Rami is Rami here? Hi, Rami. With Rami, we did that <coughs> in 2005. We applied 200 metric tons per hectare of fly ash on a clay, cl cracking clay, soddy cracking clay soil and 800 tons per hectare. I'm not showing the 800. But look at cracking in the summer after. Actually, it's uh, three, uh, three summers after the application. We had, this is, you see chickpeas was on the third year after application. <coughs> so still, this was maintained after three years and after actually even more. Maybe we can see, no, we could, there is a wheat on top of that field now, so we won't see nothing. Now look, one minute. So I, I won't show you, there was no effect on, almost no effect on elemental content of uh, corn the first year. This is a nice picture which I'm not going to show you. I'll go straight to the conclusion. So there is a long list of conclusions which are, all make sense and all are nice, but I'll go to the straightforward conclusion. There are many conclusions, as I was talking about. So being briefly, being strict and strictly scientific, scientific, it is groovy material. You should use it whenever you can. Thank you for your attention.